This is Michael, also known by his online handle Dog Playing Tetris, who recently had arguably the clutchest Tetris match performance of all time when he set new world records in each of his three winning games during a victorious best of five set in the March 2022 Classic Tetris Monthly Masters Event Finals. And in this video, I'll be breaking down every single one of them. Dog is no stranger to playing under pressure, having won the Classic Tetris World Championships for the past two years and winning the 2022 World Championships Waco, Texas qualifier earlier this year. But this match was special right out of the gate because after making the finals in a grueling bracket of 16 of the best Tetris players in the world, Dog's opponent for the match was none other than his older brother Pixel Andy. With Dog ranked second and Andy ranked third in Tetris ELO among all active players, they've both been at the top of the scene for a long time. In their two previous highest profile face-offs, Dog had defeated Andy both times, reverse sweeping him in the 2020 World Championships Finals and winning three games to one in the 2021 World Championships Semifinals. But since then, Pixel Pixel Andy had incredibly gotten even better. In early 2022, Andy shocked the Tetris scene by being the first to get back-to-back -back 1.5 million scores in competition, a score that only 15 people have ever even gotten once. Andy was heavily bolstered by his proficiency in the new rolling technique in the scene that allowed him to consistently score Tetrises past level 29, the fastest speed in the game. So this set was sure to be a classic, but before diving in, I need to take a brief intermission to talk about this video's sponsor. Every great game has its signature challenge that signifies mastery of skill. For NES Tetris, it's getting the max out. For Tetris 2, it's figuring out why they added a Y piece. And for Raid Shadow Legends, well, given that you may not have heard of this game before, it's one of the best hidden gems of the video game industry, I'll just tell ya. It's Raiding the Doom Tower! The backstory is that someone named the Arbiter fought a bunch of scoundrels in the past, but she wasn't strong enough to take them all out for good, so instead she imprisoned them in a massive Tower of Doom until she figured out how to deal with them. Based Basically, it's like the Purple Names channel in the CTM Discord server. But there's a problem in the raid world. The tower is starting to fail, so you gotta gather an army and go beat up the troublemakers inside before they get out and wreak havoc on the world. Here's how you're gonna do that. Raid has a brand new event this summer solstice called the Path of Light, where you can explore three branching paths and get a ton of rewards to help you on your journey. And that's not all. Raid's currently got a special daily on a chase event going on. All you gotta do is play Raid for seven days between now on July 20th, and you straight up get her. Deliana is one of the best champions in the game. Believe me, it's so much more fun playing her in Raid than in NES Tetris. Oh, there's Deliana in Xbox. I'm going for the clear. What, 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 she didn't clear anything. But wait, there's more. If you start playing the game through my link in the description or my QR code here on the screen, you'll get unique bonuses such as a free epic champion Tyriel, 200k silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and an ancient shard. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Do you get these kind of rewards for winning CTM Community Tournament Tier 4? Yeah, that's what I thought. So once you're in the game, just enter promo code MYDELIANA to get everything, including 50 XP boost to instantly get the hero Deliana to max level 50! And thanks once again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring Tetris content. Why peace? Why do you call to me? All right, now let's get back to the clutchest performance ever. So in game one of this March 2022 showdown, Andy had a monster pace with nearly a 200,000 point lead as Dog was approaching level 29. The first digit of the score is displayed in hexadecimal, so B equals 1.1 million. Five lines before he would hit level 29, Dog made an unfortunate blunder when he got a long bar while being ready for a Tetris and instead tried to slot it over to the left and hung it on column two, causing him to have to make panic placements in the center with his next two pieces and fill his board with holes. Even though he would get another long bar to fill the left side, there wasn't enough time to clean up the board before hitting level 29, where a high dirty stack is a death sentence. Dog quickly topped out, with Andy looking over several times in surprise. Andy had a messy high board going into level 29 as well, but he had been so efficient beforehand that it didn't matter. And with the higher score, he took game one by a massive margin. The pressure was now on Dog to take three of the next four games to win. In game two, needing a win to avoid falling into an 0-2 hole, Dog entered level 29 with one point 1 million points and a 100,000 point lead over Andy. But with Andy able to score big past level 29, Dog would likely need to continue scoring to take the win. Dog was also proficient in the new rolling technique, but initially played it safe, just burning singles and doubles throughout levels 29 and 30. But Andy kept up the aggression, quickly getting a Tetris on level 29 to momentarily pull just 1,000 points behind Dog. Andy then ran into a bit of trouble with his stack, and Dog decided to go aggressive, gambling hard with a Tetris setup that put holes in his stack, but quickly paid 
trade off with a Tetris to take a one Tetris score lead. Andy responded by cleaning up his stack in short order and setting up another Tetris of his own on level 32, pulling back within a few thousand points. But a couple misdrops on Andy's side would quickly cause his board to unravel, and he topped out right as Dog had set up another Tetris to put him again in a decisive lead and take the victory right as he was crossing over to 1.3 million points, already a very rare score to get in competition. But Dog decided to keep playing. Incredibly, Dog continued his aggression, getting another Tetris into level 37 and crossing the 1.4 million mark on level 38. As Andy sat and watched, Dog continued building a perfect stack, getting another Tetris into level 39. Dog again went aggressive on level 40, going all in on a Tetris and putting holes in his stack at the top just as he got a long bar for the Tetris to cross the 1.5 million barrier. As he continued to burn lines, Dog was approaching a very significant milestone. One more Tetris would cause a score rollover, as with Hexadecimal, the game could not register a score above 1.6 million. This was a milestone Dog hadn't hit before, though he had come painfully close. In his personal best at the time, he'd set up a Tetris to get 1.6 million, but misdropped by one column, ending the run. But in this game, Dog would coolly and calmly set up for a Tetris and get it, causing the score to wrap around back to zero. Even after misdropping, Dog quickly cleaned up his board to get another Tetris and closed in on another barrier, the first ever 1.7 million score in competition. Now on level 45, Dog still kept going, getting yet another Tetris. Dog tried to set up a center wall Tetris for 1.8 million, but became double long bar dependent and entered a dig situation, misdropped a double that would have put him over the mark and ended up topping out with 1.797 million, leaping out of his chair in disbelief, smashing the competition score will record and his own personal best. However, at the end of the day, Dog had even the set, but would now need to take two more games to secure the match victory. But he was ready for an encore. Although Dog's score from game two was unbelievably impressive, for some factions of the Tetris community, its status as the highest competition score carried an asterisk because Dog had kept playing after he had already won the game. This was something never done in the early days of the scene's history because the tournaments ran on a tight schedule. But after a commentator encouraged Ben Mullen to keep playing during a victory where he was close to the World Championship's first ever 1 million point score, the practice of playing after you had already won to try and achieve a world record or personal milestone became known as a Mullen. And the argument against Mullen's counting for records, like the highest competition score, is that a key component of competitive strategy is to play as aggressively and efficiently as possible without risking topping out. And with Dog already having the win secured, he was free to play as dangerously aggressive as he wanted without having to worry about losing the match. But in game three, he would render all those arguments obsolete. Dog again carried a more than 100,000 point lead into level 29, but against Andy, a lead like that would never be safe. This time, it was Dog who was aggressive right out the gate, getting a level 29 Tetris and immediately setting up another but having to settle for a triple. Andy successfully transitioned to level 29 and got a Tetris right away, but then had a slight misflip and ended up getting stuck in a dig, meaning Dog had breathing room to coast. But Dog was not interested in coasting. He banged down an aggressive center well Tetris, taking a nearly 200,000 point lead as Andy continued to dig. Dog stacked into a precarious long bar dependency while trying to build a Tetris, but got back to back long bars to open the Tetris wall and get a Tetris on level 32 to get 1.3 million. And even though Andy was being left in the dust, Dog pushed even further, getting back to back to back Tetrises in a row to reach one point four million. Still trying to get his board clean, Andy had what would be a fatal misdrop right as Dog got another Tetris on level 35. Right as Andy topped out, Dog got another Tetris to reach the 1.5 million mark. Dog would then get a few more lines before topping out, and this game was in some ways even more historic than the previous one. Dog had not only somehow bested Andy's back-to-back 1.5 million scores in competition by getting a back-to-back 1.7 and 1.5, Dog's 1.5 stood out from every every other 1.5 million score in competition up to that point, of which there weren't many. Every other competition 1.5 had been a massive, massive Mullen, but Dog's hadn't. Dog was going crazy aggressive with Tetris's while under the pressure of trying to maintain a lead over Andy, who was a looming threat the whole time to clear up his board and chase down the deficit. So despite it being a more subjective and not officially tracked world record, Dog had clearly achieved the highest non-Mullen score ever because no other game at that point had even come close. But no no matter how good a player is, the perils of playing aggressively can strike at any time. In game four, Dog was again approaching level 29, but had a messy board and tried to place a T-piece on the left instead of a safer move towards 
the middle. In the long run, moving the teepees to the left would have resulted in a more stable board, but the move carried more risk. Because when Dog couldn't get it over in time and misdropped, he shut off a Tetris that would have been available down the center, and the resulting stack quickly ended his game. Just like in game one, Andy also had a messy board going into level 29 and topped out right away, but again, his pre-29 efficiency just barely gave him the victory as he looked over in surprise. So now everything was on the line in game five, which was a nail biter from the very start, as Dog got S and Z bursted to be forced into an early high long bar dependency. A situation where a single misdrop could instantly end the game, but he perfectly executed the dig and breathed an enormous sigh of relief. Right before the level 19 speed change, he encountered a nearly identical situation where another S and Z burst forced him into a long bar dependency, and again, under enormous pressure, he made no misdrops and got the dependency open just in time for a long bar to open the stack again. Andy got stuck in a high stack with no clear burn options on level 22 and had to block as well and navigate a dig of his own, but also managed to pull through. Andy would end up transitioning to level 29 around 100,000 points behind and played it safe, taking a safety triple on an early Tetris setup while he awaited what score Dog might give him to chase down. But Dog had no time for caution. The points poured down as Dog rattled off five Tetrises on the first three levels after 29, only slowing down after a slight misdrop on level 32. Now over 200,000 points behind, Andy knew he had to pick up the pace and set up for a Tetris. A long bar came, but he was unable to get it over for a Tetris and topped out with 932,000, giving Dog the deciding victory, but Dog wasn't done. As Andy clapped in applause, Dog completed another dig and opened up the well for a Tetris down the center, crossing over to 1.2 million. Dog would end up scoring one more Tetris on level 36 before hanging a few pieces in the center and topping out less than 1,000 points short of 1.3 million. But even if he hadn't reached the same heights in this game as with his first two victories, Dog etched his name into the record books in multiple ways. First, Dog and Andy's match had now set a new world record for the highest ever combined score in a five game match with 12,216,547, shattering the previous record of 10,888,120 set by Huffleupagus and Joseph in the 2021 World Semifinals several months prior. And to put it into perspective just how utterly dominant Dog was, and why I consider this the clutchest performance ever, here is a chart of how much was scored every time across all 59 games in the entire tournament when a player went past level 29. There's a reason why level 29 is still often called the kill screen to this day. Even among the best players in the world, most of the time, it means instant death or not much in the way of scoring. So where are Dog's games from the finals on this chart? There's game number two, there's game number three, and there's game number five. Dog had the best three games on the kill screen among all players in the entire tournament and he did it in the finals when the pressure was at the highest. Which leads actually into a bonus world record. The March 2022 Masters event as a whole set a record of its own by having the largest ever crowdfunded prize pool in classic Tetris history at $3,270, fueled in large part by incredibly generous donations from Shall Be Satisfied and Scott Gray. By winning the match, Dog walked away with $1,471, which was enough to vault him into the all-time number one spot on the classic Tetris tournament earnings leaderboard with over $9,300 in lifetime earnings. But if you can believe it, a lot has happened since then. As it turns out, in the following three months, nearly every world record set in Dog's match will be broken. The April 2022 Mega Masters event, which was expanded from 16 to 32 players, reached an unbelievable mark of over $6,000 to shatter the record. And in the May 2022 Masters event, Pixel Andy finally got redemption, as he set new world records for the highest non-Mullen score and overall high score in competition versus Fractal in Game 2 of the semifinals, en route to winning the entire tournament in the finals. We are definitely in the golden age of competitive NES Tetris right now, and I can't wait to cover as much of the scene's progression as I can in upcoming videos. So thanks for watching. You can check out the full original VOD of Dog and Andy's match on screen, along with Dog and Andy's personal YouTube channels. And I'll see you in the next one.